security lockdown and get to the reactor room. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Fudge Muppet Fallout 4 build. It is Michael here, and today I'm excited to bring you our very first vault Tech Workshop DLC build, The Overseer. The Overseer is a cold and calculated scientist bound to take over the Commonwealth without letting morals stand in the way. He's a master of manipulation, bending man and machine to his will with charisma and intelligence. He's the ideal candidate to manage the newly discovered Vault 88 and will use his charm and scientific know-how to create efficient settlements and supply lines. Now before we get into the Overseer, I do want to say check out our latest Fallout New Vegas build if you're interested. There's an annotation on screen. If you click this, it won't take you out of this video, it'll just open up a new tab. It is a Corsa. And let us know if you want a Corsa for Fallout 4 as well. But now let's get back into the Overseer. Though the Overseer lacks frontline combat experience, he's not to be taken lightly on the battlefield. He's reserved and devious, planning his attack from out of harm's way. He directs robots, people, and creatures while supervising the action in power armor and providing cover fire with his pistol. This build rewards strategic plays. The Overseer considers charging hastily into danger to be foolish and instead elects to put mind over matter. Keep in mind that all the timestamps for navigating sections of this video are in the description. Check that out if you're looking for any specific part of the build, but first up, we have the backstory. The Overseer was born into a family of academics in Boston. His values were heavily influenced by his entrepreneurial engineer father. His father studied at the Commonwealth Institute of Technology, where he met a young Robert Edwin House, the future CEO and founder of Robco Industries. While studying with Mr. House, the Overseer's father helped design and prototype the original Pip-Boy, which would later be developed for vault -Tec. He also assisted in the development of a number of robots which would later be sold by Robco to the pre-war US military. This included such innovations as the Assaultron, iBot, Protectron, and many more. His father then divided his time between working as a lead designer for Robco on the West Coast and raising a family back home in Boston. The Overseer idolized his father greatly. As a child, he was infatuated by the many robots his father would bring home from work and soon learned how to fix malfunctioning machines around the house. As a teenager, the Overseer's intelligence was leagues ahead of his peers, but his charismatic nature worked in his favor as he was capable of manipulating individuals and machinery with equivalent ease. While being a methodical and pragmatic student, his classmates definitely still thought he was a blast to be around, especially that time in high school when he somehow managed to create a functioning landmine from oil adhesive metal and his school lunchbox. But despite the occasional detention and bomb scare, the Overseer's scientific endeavors were a source of marvel. He was his father's son without a doubt. After school, the Overseer studied at the CIT to become an engineer as well. This is where he met his future wife, but the wedding arrangements were put on hold due to his aspirations of joining the war effort and working with his father as a member of the United States Army Robotics Division. The effectiveness of the mass-produced Robco robots as a military asset could be largely accredited to the Overseer and his father's productivity and extensive knowledge of robotics. While his achievements were no easy feat, the Overseer was motivated by his father's accomplishments to create a legacy of his own. He believed that a flawless moral compass hindered scientific discovery. During his time as an engineer for the US Armed Forces, he became intrigued by the work of the West Tech Research Facility in California. The Overseer learned about the evolution of the T-51 power armor and the sinister experiments being undertaken on unwilling test subjects, but he had no intention to intervene as he believed, despite the unethical sacrifice, the research was essential for the advancement of America's military technology and weaponry. The Overseer eventually decided to put down the microscope and return to Boston and his fiancée. 
Once he was married and Sean was born, the overseer planned to operate the Robco Sales and Service Center near Boston Airport, which he would someday pass on to his son. But as the story goes in the fantastic world of Fallout, this was not to be. And on October 23rd, the overseer and his family were rushed into Vault 111 as the skyline was engulfed by nuclear devastation. And that brings us on to factions. When the Overseer awakens in the Vault 200 years later, he is confused and angry, but after growing accustomed to his new environment, his cold and calculated nature re-emerges. He understands the reasoning behind the vault Tech social experimentations and is fascinated by the research. While exploring the Commonwealth, the Overseer will often be inclined to investigate other accessible vaults. Despite all of his technological and scientific contributions to the American war effort, Boston now lies in ruins, and the Overseer is determined to use his experience as a means of restoring his life to its former glory. He is willing to put morality aside to accomplish this. He believes the greatest leaps in human achievement require sacrifice, and for this reason he will manipulate anyone and everything to reach his goals. As he journeys through the wasteland, the Overseer inevitably catches wind of the Institute and the existence of synths. As a former engineer, he is impressed by the intricacy of the artificial intelligence and he seeks out the Institute. Upon discovering the Institute, he is relieved that practical scientific pursuit still exists and he will elect to side with them, deciding that the alternatives are misguided and below him. He is perfectly happy deceiving the railroad and eliminating them as their primary objective revolves around hindering the Institute's progress. Killing in the name of science is all the reason the Overseer needs. Now, spoiler warning, he is also pleased with Sean for focusing on science and the betterment of America's future. Now, even though the Overseer was unable to raise him, Sean followed in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. This is seen as a good thing. The Overseer believes the Brotherhood are too short-sighted and care more about hoarding technology than actually advancing it. Fortunately, his knowledge of power armor and pre-war tech will help him defeat the Brotherhood despite his lack of combat ability. Once the interfactional conflict is over, the Overseer will turn his attention to Vault 88 and ultimately take charge. This will act as his base of operations, fueled by settlements around the wasteland. Now it's time to get into the stats. Starting the game, you'll want to put 2 points into Strength, 1 into Perception, you'll have 2 Endurance, 10 Charisma, 10 Intelligence, 2 Agility, and 1 Luck. The Special Book will be put into Endurance. We recommend acquiring the Strength Bobblehead from the Mass Fusion Building as early as possible. The third level of Strength will give the Overseer access to one of his must-have perks, Armor. As the history of this character suggests, Brute Force and Physical Prowess are not this guy's strong suit. This guy's strong suit is a fully modded set of power armor. For that reason, 3 points of strength is all you need to play this build. Perception and luck can be left at 1. The Overseer is not really known for his combat awareness and his success comes from his hardworking attitude, not blind fortune. Where the Overseer really shines is in charisma and intelligence. 10 points of charisma will allow him to take control of everyone around him. As the devious mastermind behind future vault trials and tribulations, maxing this stat and the intimidation perk it unlocks will be crucial for this character. Anything less than maximum intelligence would be an insult to the Overseer. Allocating 10 points here will provide him with access to all 8 of the essential perks in this stat tree. The former CIT student and engineer will rely on his intelligence to protect and preserve him in the Commonwealth. He's not just the enigmatic face behind the prospering Vault 88, he's also the brains. In combat, the Overseer keeps himself at a safe distance, garbed in power armor, to watch over the battlefield and direct his followers. He has no interest in taking a bullet when somebody else can take it for him. As a result, endurance and agility are not necessities. He does, however, have enough agility for the commando perk should he ever find himself in the thick of it. From there, he can adopt a spray and pray approach. After all, the laws of probability tend to favor automatic weapons. There are many perks to being as alluring and academically gifted as the Overseer, so let's talk about the essentials. In the Charisma stat line, you'll want to take all ranks of Animal Friend, Wasteland Whisperer, and Intimidation. These perks ensure that he has as much control over those around him as possible. He can count on his persuasive talents to pacify, insight, and command his enemies, even if they were leaving dents in his power armor moments before. 
Also in this tree, one point of the inspirational perk will give your companions an extra 20% of damage output, and as a bonus, they won't be able to hurt you. So don't worry if one of your robot minions demonstrates some truly awful aim. You won't have to turn them to scrap as an example to the others. Finally, under Charisma, we have the local leader perk, which will be great once you take charge of Vault 88 and get all your settlement stuff underway. Using this perk, you can establish supply lines between workshop settlements and build stores and workstations. Additionally, the Cap Collector perk is required for building certain stores so you can make even more money. This will grant you 20% extra caps when selling, 20% off when buying, and the opportunity to invest a total of 500 caps to raise a store's buying capacity. You've got to have a good economy, and this empire of thriving settlements will guarantee the vault will operate to its full potential. As we talked about earlier, the overseer's area of expertise is science. You'll want to take advantage of everything the intelligence line has to offer. Taking all ranks of the science perk, as well as three ranks of the gun nut perk, will open the door to all the weapon mods you need. The armorer perk from the strength stat tree goes hand in hand with this and will permit the overseer to deck out his power armor however he sees fit. Due to this emphasis on weapons and armor crafting, all ranks of the scrapper perk will make life a lot easier when finding those tricky materials. The overseer's career working with Robco Industries speaks volumes of his understanding of technology. This means he's a master of Robco terminals and can hack them with his eyes closed. Three levels of the hacker perk will see to it that no terminal is too well encrypted for the overseer. It also means that he has a complete understanding of machines and their inner workings. Maxing out the robotics expert perk allows the overseer to hack a robot and give it commands or just tell it to self-destruct. Combined with the Automatron DLC, he will have complete control over the robots of the Wasteland. Another essential perk is Nuclear Physicist. The Overseer's reliance on power armor is far more viable with a point invested into each of the three ranks. With this perk maxed out, we'll get some extra bonus for radiation weapons, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is fusion cores will last twice as long, and the cores can be ejected from the armor, causing a devastating explosive blast. For those desperate, hopefully rare times when your companions fail and you find yourself in the heat of battle, we suggest dropping 3 points into the medic perk. Then your trusty supply of stim packs will restore 80% of your health and your radaways will remove 80% of your rads. Also worth investing in for these circumstances is Nerd Rage. This will slow time and give the Overseer plus 40 damage resistance and plus 40% attack damage when his health drops below 20%. On top of all of this, every kill in this Rage mode will restore lost health. Prudence in battle is all well and good, but when push comes to shove, sometimes the Brainiac's gotta break some necks. Finally, we have the Commando perk mentioned before. Reaching rank 5 will grant double automatic weapon damage, 20% more hipfire accuracy, and a 6% chance to stagger opponents. These benefits will go hand in hand with the Overseer's weapon of choice, which we'll get into very soon. Not including gear, but including all the bobbleheads, the Overseer's special stats will be 3 Strength, 2 Perception, 4 Endurance, 11 Charisma, 11 Intelligence, 3 Agility, and 2 Luck. The Overseer will wear the Legend of Vault 88 variant of the Vault Jumpsuit. This jumpsuit provides only 2 damage resistance, 12 energy resistance, and 15 rad resistance. Additionally, it reduces damage from ghouls by 15% on the wearer. Now visually, it's not really any different from any other vault jumpsuit, but it is made up for by your combat attire. So what you're really going to be wearing for most of the game is your power armor. So on the battlefield, you're going to sport a totally upgraded set of X01 power armor, complete with the vault tech paint job. A good way to get a full suit of this armor is after you reach level 28 and you head to an unmarked building labeled 35 Court. On the map that is located just west of Custom House Tower. At Mark 6, the X01 Power Armor boasts a monstrous 1820 damage resistance, 1390 energy resistance, and 1050 rads resistance. As for the paint work, that will give the Overseer a plus one boost to Charisma, which is nice and helpful. When modding the suit, the best choice would be the calibrated shocks mod on the legs 
for 100 more points of carry weight. Tesla coils on the torso, though that may vary depending on your personal preference. The internal database in the helmet for plus two intelligence, so you level faster. No mods on the arms, and you can top that off with the Vault Boy headlamp to really add that extra bit to the Overseer's aesthetic. Lastly, we have his choice of firearms. The Overseer is no marksman, but he is familiar with the 10mm pistol, the iconic Vault Dweller's weapon. So finding and upgrading a 10mm pistol to make it automatic and do heaps of damage is the best course of action. Ideally, while traversing the wasteland, you'll be able to pick up one with a handy legendary effect to make it a little more reliable. But for the most part, the Overseer won't depend on his gun, as his many minions should be doing the dirty work on his behalf. This brings us to companion choices. Thanks to the Overseer's skills in the manipulation of all things, he won't be wasting time on standard companions and their frivolous desires. Instead, he'll engineer automated killing machines in the workshop and send them to do his bidding without having to worry about their ulterior motives. This is where the creative freedom of this build comes into play even more. The Overseer has all the knowledge and tools needed to design his own companions, robots. As much as it pains us to admit, Preston Garvey's intel regarding the location of settlements is very convenient for the Overseer. In order for his customized Vault 88 to survive and thrive in the Commonwealth, he will focus on maintaining as many settlements as humanly possible. All resources produced, including agriculture and water, will exist to power Vault 88. Courtesy of the Wasteland Workshop DLC, the settlements will also house captured animals and creatures for examination. You'll want a roleplay that you can experiment on all these subjects. There you have it guys, this is the Overseer our Vault Tech Workshop DLC build. I hope you have as much fun playing this build as we did making it. Check out the description for all the good stuff, including our social media links, where you can keep up with everything Fudge Muppet. Don't forget to drop a like, a comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. As always, thank you for tuning in. I'm Michael, and I'll see you next time.